Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is another March Mystery Madness weekly wrap up video. I can actually hardly even believe that this is already the wrap up for week two of March Mystery Madness. We're almost halfway through the month. Uh, but boy, has it ever been a great reading month. I have been reading some really fantastic mysteries this month. I mean, the vast majority of what I've read has been fantastic, so I'm super excited. So before I get into uh, telling you about the books that I read this past week, I need to show you the book that I found that fit the prompts from yesterday's 2x2 two two mystery game, which were to find a mystery that's told in the third person and before 1970. And so I'm gonna go with Heads You Lose by Christiana Brand. This is from my cart, so I have not read this one yet, but I'm excited to get to it, and it totally fits with the, the theme this year for March Mystery Madness because there are twins in this book. So this is one of her Inspector Cockrell uh, series. I wouldn't be seen dead in a ditch in a hat like that. Those were the last words of Mousy Grace Moreland before she was found brutally murdered behind Squire Stephen Pendock's gracious mansion. Her body in a ditch, her severed head obscenely garbed in Francesca Hart's new feathered hat. Six people at Pigeonsford Cottage heard Grace Moreland utter those bitter, jealous words, including the dazzling Francesca herself, her twin sister Veron Venetia, and dashing Pendock, the squire of the village, whose attention Grace had so desperately wanted and who only had eyes for Francesca, who cared for him not at all. So this is the one that I'm going for and I'm super excited to get to this book um, soon. Uh, I really like Christiana Brand and I love that this fits the theme so well. So there you have it. Okay, let's just dive into the books that I've been reading and stay tuned to the end of the video where I will play a new round of our mystery game. I finished A Vow of Silence by Veronica Black. I mentioned this in last week's video that I had started reading this. This is the first in the Sister Joan series and it's set in a convent in Cornwall. This was really fun. This was uh, published in 1990. Something is not quite right at the Cornwell House convent. One young novice has already died, an apparent victim of a routine fire drill. Another has mysteriously withdrawn from the convent and her family has not heard from her since. The youngest worshippers have long flowing hair and Reverend Mother Anne herself wears makeup and perfume. So there is just something a little bit off and Reverend Mother Agnes sends Sister Joan to that convent to kind of try and figure out what's going on there. Um, and it was interesting because even though I read the synopsis and there was stuff about the solstice and you know, you knew things were just a little bit off, I wasn't quite prepared for where the story went and it felt a little bit like a Dan Brown book. <laughs> But I did enjoy it. Um, I did really enjoy it and I would read more in this series. And then I read Lost Hills by Lee Goldberg. This was um, a book that I heard about from Naomi at Naomi's Bookshelf. I really enjoy Lee Goldberg and this is the first book in a new series that he's done about um, Eve Ronan who is a Los Angeles County Sheriff. She's part of the Sheriff's Department. She's a detective. And um, this was great. It was a quick read. It was like 225 pages, but it was action packed and really, really good. I kind of had this impression that I was watching a show as I was reading this, which I guess is not much of a surprise because Lee Goldberg has written a lot of screenplays. He wrote, he wrote a lot of, um, for t a lot of TV shows. Um, but yeah, this was really great. So Eve Ronan is brand new, a brand new detective. She's been recently promoted and, uh, she gets sent to this scene um, where there is blood all over the house. There's a huge amount of blood, but no bodies. And the, the case was just great. I really liked Eve. She was a great character. I liked the side characters as well. And I just loved the flow. It was very much a police procedural. Um, you follow Eve as she's investigating this case. Um, but I loved the flow of the story. It, it was very fast paced. And, um, and yeah, I just, I just really liked it. And I marked something here. <laughs> I thought this was funny. Have you ever seen that TV show Monk about that uptight detective who is a clean freak and wants everything to be even? <laughs> and then it continued on for a bit. I just thought that was a hilarious nod because Lee Goldberg wrote 
for the Monk TV series and he has also written a whole series of books about Monk. And so I love that he put that in there. That was great. I will definitely be continuing on with this series. And I had planned to read this slowly throughout the month, but I could not help myself. I just flew through it and I finished Something to Hide by Elizabeth George. This was well worth the wait. It was so, so good. I love the way that Elizabeth George just sucks you into this into the story and you care so much for the characters. So you've got the ongoing characters from the series that I love and that I loved to spend time with again, but brand new characters that I had never met before, before this book, I found myself caring about so much. And throughout the book, I was like, oh, please let it be okay. Please let it be okay. Yeah, it was, it was so good. She's a phenomenal writer and the mystery was great. The characters are fantastic. If you really like character driven, mysteries elizabeth george is for you the plot is fantastic as well um so yeah so this this one um this one uh there was a lot about um the nigerian community in london which was really interesting and there was a lot about female genital genital mutilation which is awful and it was really hard to read um but but just super super fantastic I marked something here. <laughs> so this is um, Detective Linley is talking about the women that he chooses to fall in love with. He's thinking about this. Um, and they always turned out to be far more complicated than he reckoned they would be. He couldn't work out why this was the case unless it meant that he simply didn't understand women at all, which seemed ever more a distinct possibility. He was perhaps expecting them to be Jane Bennett to his Mr. Bingley, because after all, he knew he couldn't possibly cope with an Elizabeth, <laughs> which meant his unspoken and unacknowledged wish for a woman who blushed, made conversation when necessary, knew all the appropriate social niceties, was gentle and submissive, expressed her opinions in ways that he found both acceptable and supportive of his own opinions, and otherwise didn't occupy his mind other than when she was playing the piano, and even then she could merely exist merely as an object for him to own and admire. But surely that couldn't be the case. Could it? No, it absolutely couldn't. <laughs> I loved that little like, he was expecting a Jane Bennett to his uh, Mr. Bingley. And what strikes me as so funny about that is I don't know that I would have called Lindley a Bingley. I think that he is more of a Darcy. Anyway, I just thought that was a hilarious little thing. Um, so yeah, I absolutely loved, I loved Something to Hide. And then I read Witness for the Prosecution and Other Stories by Agatha Christie. I'm not going to talk about this. Um, I'm saving it up for my upcoming Agatha Christie Read Through Project video. I will say that there was two stories in here that were perfect for March Mystery Madness for our theme. There was one called The Fourth Man, um, and four is, two times two is four. But also in that story, they talk about the double soul. So I thought that fits the theme. And also there was a story called The Second Gong, which I think um, after Witness for the Prosecution was my favorite story in this collection. And that one obviously fits because it has the word second in the title. And then I joined Stormy for her read-along of Killing Floor by Lee Child. This fits the March Mystery Madness theme because Killing Floor has two words in the title. Lee also has double E's in his name, so it's a perfect fit. I have never read any of the Jack Reacher novels. I have never seen any of the movies or shows, nothing. I was going into this really blind, um, but I just thought, you know, it would be fun to join her in this read along. And again, this was another really big book and I just flew through it. Um, it's like, it's over 500 pages. And even though I've never read anything by 
Lee Child before, I had this sneaking suspicion that I was going to enjoy his writing because whenever I see Lee Child give a blurb on books, I always read it because I love those. I love the way he writes those blurbs. <laughs> and that was enough for me to think I would probably get along very well with his writing <laughs> and I totally did. <laughs> This is not normally the, the type of book that I read, and I probably won't read any more in the series, but I did enjoy this one. Um, Jack Reacher is a really interesting character, and I really enjoyed the introduction at the beginning where Lee Child talks about how he created Jack Reacher. That was fascinating. And so yeah, so this was just a really fun, a really fun read, and I've enjoyed uh, talking about it with people on uh, Stormy's Discord. And then I did another buddy read. This is The Waiting Sands by Susan Howitch. I did this as a buddy read with Donna. Um, and I, this was so fun. I love buddy reading with Donna. I love talking about books with her. It's it's just so fun. And I love I love reading the the things that she sees that sometimes I don't see in, in books. It's, it's very entertaining. So The Waiting Sands was written in 1966 which is how it fits in with the theme. It is a romantic suspense and it is, I mean, it is so totally the 60s, first of all, that was hilarious. Um, it's set in Scotland and um, Rachel gets invited to um, a friend that she met at school. Um, her friend is called Decima. And, and Decima is about to have her 21st birthday. And that's a big deal because that's when she is inheriting um, all her money. And um, she's been married for two years and Rachel gets invited, although she hasn't seen Decima in years, she gets invited to this birthday party. And when she arrives, it's a, it's a very remote house. You have to get to it by boat. It has no telephone. It's very isolated. There are quicksands um, surrounding the house. It's, so it's like a very remote, isolated, isolated house, house which is awesome. So when Rachel gets there, um, Decima and her husband Charles are there. There's also another pair, which um, kind of reminded me somewhat of uh, Mary and Henry Crawford a little bit. Um, what were their names now? Daniel and his sister, mm, I've forgotten her name, but Daniel and her sister. Uh, Daniel knows Charles. And then Rohan, who is a friend of um, Rachel's, she's known him since she was a child. So it's just this small cast of characters in this remote house. And Decima um, confesses to Rachel that she thinks that she's going to be killed, that, that someone's going to kill her before her 21st birthday. Uh, so yeah, this one was overly dramatic, uh, very dramatic. Um, yeah, I... I anticipated, I was right about one of the deaths, but not the other one. Um, I did figure out who the killer was going to be, but it was, it was a fun, it was a fun read. One thing that I found interesting, because in a story like this, where it's all about this remote, isolated house, and there's all this tension, I mean, throughout the, the book, you were getting this, like, it was just so tense for those two days, and, uh, um, you know, it was suspenseful and, and very, very tense. And then, you know, murders happen, and then all of a sudden, it's part two, and it's five years later. And I thought that was a really interesting choice on the author, because all, uh, on the author's behalf, because all of the tension is just gone. All of the suspense is just gone. Um, it had been building and building and building and building, and then also, it was just gone. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, I did mark something here. Oh, this is a description of the house. Roshvin. Rachel had never been there, but Decima had talked so often of her home that Rachel had evolved a clear picture in her mind at the house to which no road led, its gray walls imprisoned between the mountains and the sea, the savage coast of western Scotland, remote, vast, and unmarked by time. She had thought on more than one occasion how nice it would be to visit to Decima there. <laughs> so that's The Waiting Sands. 
And then I read Joe Country by Mick Heron. This is um, the sixth, I think, in, in his Slough House series. Um, let me see what the date is on that one. 2019, I want to say. Yes, 2019. It fits the theme because it's got a two word title. Um, and I don't want to say too much because this is an, uh, a series that you definitely have to read in order. But there is a new slow ho horse at Slough House and there is a new leader of operations at the park. And uh, so that's all I'm going to say about the story other than um, that I, I really enjoy this series. I really like the characters. Um, they're not great, all necessarily all of them. They're all very complicated and damaged, um, but it's fascinating and I love the espionage stuff. Um, I don't, I've said this before, I don't tend to read a lot of spy or espionage books, um, but this is, this is the kind that I like. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, I was loving while I read this one. I, I loved it and I'm very much looking forward to the next one. And then last but certainly not least, I finished Crooked House by Agatha Christie. This um, this weekend is the weekend with Agatha Readathon, hosted by Chantel from Chantel Reads All Days and Angie Henderson, which is super. It has been super fun. There was some live reading sprints last night that I loved, um, and um, I won't talk about this book um, because I am saving it for my Agatha Christie Read Through Project video. But um, I have never read this one before, and this was like one of the extreme few that I didn't know anything about going into because of, um, I've read so many Agatha Christie books and there's also so many adaptations that um, it's very rare for me not to know the plot of, of going into one. So I loved this one. This was a country house mystery with a small cast of characters, a small cast of suspects. Um, and yeah, classic, classic Agatha Christie. It was really, really good. Okay, there you have it. That is what I have been reading this past week. Have you read any of these books? Let's chat in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what has been your favorite read of this of this past week, even if it's a book that you're still reading, but let me know what's been your favorite of this past week. And before I say goodbye, it's time for another round of our game. Here we go, another round in the 2x2 two two mystery game. Rule number one. One type of mystery. So we're going to be looking for a thriller or a whodunit. Rule number two. Three. Setting. Urban or rural. Okay, roll number three. One. So we are looking for a thriller in an urban setting. Somehow I think that that's going to be not too difficult. Let me know the book that you find in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.